Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. It is now the slam capital of the world for the next month. We are inside Cox Pavilion on the campus of UNLV, getting set for our first game of the night. It's the Buzzsaw at 3-1, taking on The Wrath, also at 3-1. What's up, everybody? Welcome here courtside alongside my crew. He's John Dornbos, former NFL player, Super Bowl champ with the Philadelphia Eagles, and Stormy Bonatoni, sideline reporter for ESPN, also our betting analyst. I am the voice of Slam Ball. I am John Schriffen. All right, John, your first night in the booth, last night, Slam Ball, what you think? It's so fast, it's so competitive. You see the heart of the champions here, the physicality of it. I, look, I love the stopper play, as you know. Defense wins championships, and I've enjoyed the big hits. Stormy, what stood out for you the most? Well, the first word he said fast these guys are getting up and down the court like crazy non-stop action playing with reckless abandon it is so much fun to see these guys get after it. and they're so athletic it's the combination of physicality and finesse can't wait for more tonight all right so since you like hits get ready for this first game it'll feature the wrath and the wrath they already have a reputation they have become the bad boys of slam ball take a look at how they got that reputation blood between both these teams Ty McGee got popped in the mouth, chipped his tooth, he went at somebody. We had a brawl out here in practice. And there's the stopper. Oh, and look, he tried. The legs. Illegal contact. Illegal contact. Oh, we pushed him through. Yeah. Oh, oh give me that. Oh, McGee is down. Man, Protected watch out, his look. head. Uh oh, he might be hurt. Oh, he's it's talking hot. now. He is hot. Hey, hey. I'm telling you, they've got bad blood. Now both coaches hey, are coaches. coming on the floor, and they're getting into it. This is slam ball. Let's go. This is what we came to see. Let him fight, Rip. How about the coaches coming onto the floor, screaming at each other, getting into it? Trevor Anderson, James Willis, they do not like each other. Both coaches just got ejected, and the assistant coaches are now going to take over for the Wrath and the Ozone. Man, what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, buddy, we got bad blood already. All right, if you're new to Slam Ball, don't worry. There's a lot going on. We have got an entire rules package. We will show you everything you need to know to have fun tonight. Take a look. There are four ways to score in Slam Ball. A two-point shot is any jump shot or layup taken inside the Slam Zone. Goaltending is totally legal on any two-point shot. Three-point shots are anything taken from the gold zone on the floor. The new four-pointer is about three feet further than the NBA arc. No goaltending allowed, but once it hits the rim, it's live. And then there's the three-point slam dunk, the bread and butter of slam ball. You've got to touch the rim for an official slam. All right, so just like slam ball, it comes at you fast, so let's give you a refresher. Three points for a slam, two points for anything else inside the tramp when you don't put your hand on the rim. Three points for a shot made outside the tramp from the gold part of the floor. And outside the arc, it is a four-point shot. Now, open court contact, you can only touch the player with the ball after they put it on the floor to start their dribble. The game roll, it starts with a face-off. We have game rules there. It's a face-off after a foul. We don't shoot free throws. The player who was fouled goes one-on-one -on -one against the player who fouled him. And then goaltending. Inside the tramps, goaltending is legal, but outside the tramps, a shot from the wood, you have to wait for the ball to hit the, r the rim. All right, so for the wrap, you saw James Willis got into it with the Ozone earlier last week. So James Willis, head coach, he is suspended. He will not be in the game tonight. His assistant coach, James Lee, will be taking over the head coaching duties. But since you like stoppers, John, we're going to feature a stopper in the open for the wrath. Sean Stiff, he's been doing his thing. He is a beast. And let me tell you this, at 6'8", 255 pounds, this guy is holding court. He's got 28 stops, and he's leading a defense, which, let's be honest, is leading the league in steals and has a ton of loose ball recoveries. Defense wins championships. Stiff is dominating underneath the hoop, and I love watching this guy. I don't know about you, but if I'm coming in on a faceoff, the last person I want to see is a 6'8", 255 beast named Sean Stiff. Take a look at the numbers on the season for Sean Stiff. Averaging just under 19 minutes per game. We only play 20 minutes per game, so he's pretty much on the floor the entire time, averaging seven stops per game. All right, we take a look now at the three-and-one buzzsaw. Stormy, 
You said you like fast. You like the pace of the game. How about Jamal Barnes Jr. for the buzzsaw? That guy is lightning quick. Oh, yeah, we're going to get that in spades today. And he is a second-generation slam baller as well. Jamar, Jamal Barnes Sr. led the way for him. He plays the same position as his dad, and he has explosive style, so much range, a guy who prides himself in his hustle. You know he's going to be all over the court here in week two. Ooh, those highlights are just so fun to watch. He's so dynamic. We take a look at the numbers for Jamal Barnes Jr. Averaging 11 minutes per game, just over 11 points per game. And he prides himself on loose ball recoveries, averaging just under five per game. It'll be the Wrath and the Buzzsaw, both at three and one on the season. At Gunner from Lastonia, Georgia, number 72, Nick Parks. And that handler from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, number one, Darian Slade. And the coach for the Wrath is James Lee. Let's hear it one more time for the Wrath. Now, please help me welcome the starting lineup for the buzzsaw at Gunner from Seattle, Washington. Number 84, Malik Abdul Ha! At Stopper from Long Beach, New York. Number 24, Taekwon Scott. At Gunner from Moreno Valley, California. Number five, ja Jamal Barnes Jr. And at Handler from Toledo, Ohio, number 12, Devontae Pratt. And the coaches for the bus stop are Hernando Planels Jr. and Sandy Fletcher. Make some noise for the bus stop. Both teams have been announced here inside Cox Pavilion. We've got a packed house, and we are ready for our first game of the night. Now, here's the format we play here in Slam Ball. We play two games, four teams. The winners of both of those games will play off against each other tonight in what's called the main event. The main event's important. The more main event points you rack up, that will have playoff implications, and those will be tiebreakers when it comes to seeding for playoff time. So it's the buzzsaw and the wrath. Coming up next will be the slashers and the rumble. We start each game with a throwdown. It gets physical right from the jump. It'll be the wrath in the black, taking on the buzzsaw in the gray. We are underway in Vegas. It's the Wrath with the opening possession. We play five-minute quarters, running time. It only stops for the foul off a face-off. Here's Jamal Barnes Jr. throws it up to himself. There's that loose ball. The Wrath say they want to get to every loose ball on the floor. They're the bad boys. They like it. They don't mind. They're going to have some contact out here. Oh, big hits already. And when you talk about hustling, the Wrath, look, they're leading the league in steals, and they're also leading the league in loose ball recovery. So this is a team that likes to scrap and likes to hustle. So both teams missing their first shot on their own offensive possession. Once you put it on the floor, then you can be hit, but you can't get hit inside the trance. Here comes the offense for the buzzsaw. Both teams here at three and one off the mark, misconnection. And one of those losses, John, for the Wrath was against this buzzsaw team, 44-32 that opening weekend. So you know they want a little redemption here tonight. Two points. They're throwing the alley-oop. There's the stopper, Sean Stiff, with the rejection. Coming the other way is Slade. Finger roll, layup no good for Jamal Barnes Jr. Well, they stay with it. Buzzsaw still have the ball. 
Shot clock. It's at eight. Cutter coming in. And face off! Face off! So there's our first foul of the game. Instead of shooting free throws on the illegal contact, we have what's called a face-off. The player who got fouled will go one-on-one -on -one with the guy who fouled him. So here we go. Devontae Pratt has the ball going against Jordan Jones. Here's our first face-off. Oh! Making it look easy. That was a good example that these face-offs are all about timing, and you can tell the timing for the stopper there was just way off on the face-off. After a face-off, you keep possession of the ball. One, two. Seems like the buzzsaw is taking their time. They're trying to move the ball, getting a lot of backdoor cuts, and trying to establish an offense versus just straight attacking the rim. When you leave the tramps, you got to reset off the wall. There's the stopper, Stiff again, deflecting that pass. Wrath, have numbers, Darian Slade dribbles it to himself. Oh, give me that, Tyquan Scott with the block. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. Shot clock still winding down. It's at six for the wrath. Scott again with a block. Stopper two for two. Defense is going to be big in this game. And he was a brick wall in their previous meeting, too, with 10 stops. So a traveling violation turnover. And as you see, they make substitutions on the fly. That's the hockey element of the game. This is a hybrid between basketball, football, hockey, and oh, yes, off the tramps, you've got to show your gymnastic skills. Slade got laid out on the corner. Landers off the mark. Landers playing in his first game of the season, coming back from injury. And another stop there by Sean Stith. Two in the tramp. So you're not allowed to have two offensive players in the same tramp. That is a violation. Yeah, and they call that John a travel, right? They have a normal travel on the court like we're used to seeing in touch, traditional touch, basketball, but same thing there with two offensive players in the tramp at the same time. Nick Parks got up high, but he couldn't finish it. Buzzsaw coming the other way with a one-point lead. Howard will reset underneath the basket. Throws up to a cutter, and it's stiff with the interception. Darian Slade going one-on-one, -on -one and he's rejected by Scott. The Rav continually do a good job on defense, generating steals and getting the ball. But neither team able to convert right now as we take another look at this, John. Howard looking for a cutter from the side tramp. Nobody there, so he resets off the wall. Got to get something up. Shot clock's at four. Off the window, and Terrell Howard will bank it in for two points. A low-scoring first quarter. There's the stop for Sean Stiff says, let me fix that for you. That's what we're looking for. Bellamy, he's on the island. You can stay there for no longer than three seconds with the ball. Bellamy now the cutter from the top, enters the bottom tramp, and he'll be fouled. We only have one face-off per quarter, so now that's the second foul in this quarter. That's a, a bonus, two points automatically to the buzzsaw, and they keep the ball. So the shot clock's turned off, 16 seconds to play here in this first quarter. Bellamy, he was affected by Stiff. Six seconds to play here in this first quarter. The Wrath, gotta get busy. Nick Parks with two hands. And the Wrath end the first quarter with a monster slam. You talk about getting height and having straight power. Dominating. And the Wrath with that three-point slam take a one-point lead after one.
<laughs> that is our own Stormy Bonnet Tony had to get in on the action. I think you've done this before, Stormy. I couldn't let the players have all the fun, okay? <laughs> yeah, I used to be a gymnast back in the day, back before the torn meniscus and all that stuff. <laughs> but, but yeah, these Olympic transfers are too much fun to stay off of, you know it. Slade, he is rejected by Taekwon Scott. Buzzsaw with a two-point lead here as we start the second quarter. And there's the slam for Jamal Barnes Jr. doing it like his daddy. And that's what the buzzsaw needs. Look, Jamal Barnes right now has four turnovers already. He's got to make it up and really start putting up the offense and carry this team. Right back at him is Nick Parks. So the Wrath staying close. And now we're starting to see a little bit of the Rats offense, which is nice because they are without their top scorer, Ty McGee. He's out with in concussion protocol right now. They're also missing a handler in Steven Julian and their lead stopper and first round pick, Christian Gray, today. So got to make up for it from everywhere. But their coach, James Lee, said, hey, that's next man up mentality. We've got to find the offense somewhere. Well, they've got Sean Stimp on the stopping end. They got that part down. Here comes Darian Slade on offense. The cutter denied Taekwon Scott. I think he blocked it with both hands. And his head. Throwing the alley-oop. Man, the stoppers, John, have controlled the pace of the play tonight. And I think they will in the entire night. A four-point shot for Darian Slade. That's a big spot. And look, Darian Slay is kind of stepping in that Ty McGee role. So they need him to put up points. And that's a huge bucket. Off the backboard, denied by Stiff again. Here come the Wrath with a two-point lead. Nick Parks got up high. Oh, the finger roll. I like it. And that was the finger roll over a 6'7 Taekwon Scott. I mean, that is a finger roll. A reset, reset violation reset off the buzzsaw. Violation. So when you leave the tramps, you got to reset off the wall. Instead, they reset back. Here's a look at that bucket by Parks, John. And great patience. I mean, great mid-air body control and patience. Slade, he's calling for it. He just hit a four. Here's another try at it. Left it short. Rebound goes to Ryan Johnson. Slade, pump fake. Does he want another? Johnson off the tramp, no good. Open court, somebody can hit him, but nobody can catch Howard. But they misconnect on the cutter. So I talked to assistant coach James Lee, who's now the acting head coach, as a turnover here for the buzzsaw. Coming quickly, missing the jam. Stormy, you mentioned the wrap without three key players tonight. So James Lee said, normally we run 20 plays tonight. We're just going to keep with 10 plays, simplify the playbook because we have so many new players. Well, and Darius Lake, who's somebody who they're really counting on today, he normally would have been somebody coming off the bench. Now he's thrust into a starting role, a lot more on his plate than normal. So simplifying it for everybody makes a ton of sense. Man, how good has Sean Stiff been at stopping tonight? He is a brick wall right now for the Raps. Brick wall. And look at this guy. This is the last guy you want to run into. You know, we, we talked about this earlier. The buzzsaw feels like they're the most disrespected team in the league. But you know what? They're turning the ball over, and, and you know, they come and miss an easy dunk. Sometimes you wonder why you're the most disrespected. you got to make plays. Here we go right here. Let's capitalize on the one-on-one. -on -one. Stiff says not tonight. And a foul as Nick Parks was entering the tramps. Face Taylor off, fouled him. Off. So we are going to have a face-off. Face off, face off, court. So Raymond Taylor at 5'10 is going to be on defense. All right, come to the side. And Nick one, Parks at 6'4 right? is going to have the rock. John, who you got here in this face-off? Man, Parks. I'm going to go or Parks. Taylor. You gotta go Parks? I'm going to go Parks right now. Stormer, who you like? I feel like... I I'm gonna go stop her. Okay. Let's see. Oh! oh. Stormy, Put you me get in, the win. I'm ready. <laughs> I, I went against it's my like, gut. It's like I'm a betting woman or something. Something like that. How would you handicap a face-off? Like, is there, a way you know to, is there a way to bet on face-offs? Is there, that something that could happen? Not at this stage in the game, John. But there is a trend that's developing as, as betting becomes more widespread and more normalized throughout the 
just throughout the country. Micro betting is something. So you'll see that more and more in NBA games even as we get a quick two there where you can bet on like how many, if he'll make all three free throws, for example, or who's going to score on the next possession. That's what's coming in the next iteration of betting. And last night, we had the CEO and owner of Circa Resorts, Derek Stevens, on the call. He said he's got his guys crunching the numbers, and there's the jam by Jamal Barnes Jr. Circa, they want to have live lines next week so people can start betting real money on slam ball. Yep, we're going to have spreads, totals, and live betting in-game. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait for that to get started. Final seconds here in this first half. Oh, Nick Parks found a way to get that one through. It was only a two, not a three, but the Wrath increased their lead. Ten seconds to play in this first half. Barnes, Jr., throws it up to himself. Freestyle, nothing doing. Howard, got to get it up. Two seconds, and they do call a foul with .8 on the clock. Stitt did a great job hustling. Look, he stopped the one. Ball came back in quick. And we're going to see this replay. You see Stith come back in and just made a little bit of illegal contact. All right, I need your predictions. Here's a face-off. Oh. Sean Stith's on defense. Terrell Howard's I'm, got the ball. I'm John, oh, come on. I don't even know why we're having this conversation right now. All I'm right. going Stith all the way. They're both going with the stopper. Stith entered the tramp early. That is a violation. So a bucket automatically for the buzzsaw. You're not allowed to enter the tramp until the offensive player moves. Look, the last thing you want to do is give away free buckets, right? Don't give away points. Don't beat yourself. Stith, look, this is a stopper that's dominating in this league. He, he's a leader. You got to know the rules. You got to execute. So off that violation, the buzzsaw got three points. Okay. Our halftime score, it's the Wrath, 21. The buzzsaw, 19. I know you love slam ball. It is back and forth. Just disrespecting dudes, slamming on their face. Come on back. Welcome back inside Cox Pavilion. You gotta get out your phones. Nobody, you haven't seen anything like this up close and personal. We're at the half. The Buzz saw trail the raft 21-19. Alongside John Dornbaugh, Stormy Bonantoni, I'm John Schriffen. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that first half. It was a slow scoring first quarter, but as soon as that second quarter started, both teams started to pick up. And the raft, John, their stopper, Sean Stiff, he had it going early. Hey, look, he's got six stops, right? And this is a huge, to me, this is a huge important stat. Defense wins championships. I think uh, Stiff, look, he's coming in at four, uh, so he's gonna have to pick that game up. He's, he's six foot eight, 255, but he looks bigger. I just want people to know that at home. And the buzzsaw, they brought the wood, laying out the hit. Stavante Pratt soaring through. We talked about Jamal Bourne's junior Stormy in the open. He has eight turnovers in that first half. Yeah, very surprising. You know, he's usually, I mean, not not that, so I don't mean to say that in a negative way, but I'm just saying a little bit surprising. He's the guy that's usually kind of the go-to, handles everything. So hopefully he can lead the way here moving forward. But look, the buzzsaw, they've played four games. They lead the league in turnovers with coming into tonight, 72 of them. So it's a team that has a habit of turning the ball over. They got to clean that up because in so many instances, they're beating themselves and they're still three and one. So imagine if they can clean it up, they might be giving them a run for their money. How about this for an extra storyline tonight? James Lee, who is the acting head coach, he's a former slam ball player. He played back in season two and season three with the bouncers. You want to know who his head coach was with the bouncers? Give it to him. Let's go on over to the buzzsaw. Fernando Planels, who is the head coach for the buzzsaw. Well, he's one of the original coaches in slam ball. He coached the bouncers. So he was James Lee coach. He actually drafted him in the first round. A little extra wrinkle, a little salt tonight, add a little more spice. These guys want the win because they know each other so well. 
There is nothing like a player coming back to coach against his old coach. There is something about that, that the ego just says, I want this more than anybody in this room right now. And I love the fact that there's so many former coaches, former players who are coming back from that first generation of slam ball 20 years ago who are teaching the next generation the game of slam ball. And a lot of them, John, actually from the bouncers. And Hernando Planels Jr. takes a lot of pride in when I was talking to him pregame saying it is so cool to see all of my former players out here paying it forward in this way. And as you said earlier, look, the Wrath head coach uh, was suspended. And so James is able to step up and really show what he's got. It's a huge opportunity for him. I was joking with him pregame. I said, hey, you got your first win as a head coach the other day when you came through in the second half. He gave me the smirk. He said, well, we need another one. Oh, Jamal Barnes Jr. He heard us talking about his turnover. Starts this third quarter with a slam. Well, I told you he needs to come oh, out. Oh, and then he starts with a big hit. Jamal Barnes Jr. with the hit stick. Yep, needs to come out and leads the way, and he's doing it. Keep it up. Here he is on the island. And a big slam, Malik Abdul Hawk. How about this start for the buzzsaw? I love it, because look, great players can be in a little funk, but they can get themselves out of it. The mental game for Barnes is huge. Here we go, are you kidding me? He's scoring, he's stealing. He realizes that he's got to carry the weight of this team, and he's going to do it every way he can. What a collision. It was a big stop by Scott, excuse me, by Stiff. Here's that hit. Ooh. And then the other end, the stop by Sean Stitt. So two buzzsaw players in the same tramp as a turnover. Graf to get the ball back down by four. From the outside. Losing the handle. Who's going to get the loose ball? The buzzsaw have it. Ten on the shot clock. Now Stitt, the stopper, takes it right back. And an open court foul. You cannot contact a player from behind. That's the violation called against Devontae Pratt. So we have our first face off here in this third quarter. Pratt, he'll be on D as we take a look. When you see the player's name on the back of his jersey, you can't touch him. Nick Parks, who we got, folks? Parks or Pratt? I'm going with Parks, because right now, I'm, I'm going with Parks. I'm I think I'm with you. Let's see. Parks is on offense. There, there we go. go. And look, Parks is an X factor right now. He's leading the team in scoring. He's got 12 points plus those two, so he's at 14, which, you know, 20, 14 of the 24 is killing it. Nickname or three. Nick the Quick, a two time All American sprinter at Purdue as well, so one of those track guys. And we're seeing all types of athletes. We see basketball players, football players, but also a lot of track stars, Stormy, to your point, making the conversion over to slam ball. Yeah, of the drafted players, the 56 players, 68% from hoop, 16 football, nine track and field, and seven were multi-sport athletes. So it really does come from everywhere. Here's Abdul Hawk throwing the alley hoop to Howard. And he's going to get fouled in the tramp by the stopper, Stiff. Outside the stopper box. So now we're going to have a face-off for the buzzsaw. It's Terrell Howard at six foot one, going against Sean Stiff at six foot eight. Stormy, I'll give you the first call. Stiff's always going to have the advantage down low. I mean, he's six eight. What he does? What do you? Yeah. What are we asking about here? I'm going with Stiff, but again, he can't. He can't take off early. That's all I know. He can't take off early this time. All right, Howard. Faked him out. Here we go. He makes his move, hesitated, and that, that is illegal. That's illegal. Once you go, you got to keep going. It's a traveling violation, so no points for the buzzsaw. And now Stith feels a little bit better from the one that he jumped earlier. But that just tells you the intimidation factor of Stith. These players aren't just going to go in there and see what happens. They're going to try and get him off balance, get him out of the game so that they can just come up and get an easy shot. Keep possession of the ball after a faceoff, but the buzzsaw throw it away. Here comes Slade, and he, that was affected by Taekwon Scott. Stormy, it's amazing to see the stopper for the buzzsaw, Taekwon Scott, so comfortable on these tramps right now. Especially considering he told me not even as a kid playing around in anybody's backyard had he ever been on a trampoline. He is at home. He said he's also scared of heights, by the way, so being up there at first was a little, a little, bit, a little bit antsy. But Pat, the aerial specialist here at Slam Ball, said really helped him get comfortable, and he loves it. It's his favorite part of the game. Okay, we saw earlier that you're an expert on these tramps. 
What is the key to An losing expert. that fear when you're up high in the air like that? I would say bounce the tramps, don't, don't let the tramps bounce you. Ooh. Because okay. and you you want to land on that cross, that X in the center of the trampoline, right? That's the sweet spot. But when you start getting into some of those edges, we saw earlier with uh, Abdul um, with Abdul Hawk, how he just kind of took off forward. You're trying to hit specific spots to have the most success. He's taking off. Oh, oh, I think she hit the X on that one. The take My goodness. Beautiful. Nick Parks. Nick Parks leading the way in scoring, and that's why. Terrell Howard from the island dribbles it to himself, resets, leaving the tramp. Now he gets it back with six on the shot clock. Looking up, where is the cutter coming from? One on the shot clock, and the Wrath force a shot clock violation. Take turnovers however you can get them. Stiff jumping in there and getting physical. Look, they call him Tiki, his music stage name, baby. I might start calling him Tiki tonight. Slam Ball has some of the best nicknames. I feel like that's how you know you've made it. When you get a nickname, it's like the respect of the league. Guys, I'm gonna get honest with you here. I'm very emotional that my name is Stormy and sounds like a nickname, so I've never gotten a good one. But when you have a great first name I mean, like that, you don't need one. It makes me sad. I know, it's almost Take like it. you wish your name was John. <laughs> <laughs> when your name's John, why do you need a good nickname? What's your best nickname? Have you, uh, you you've had to have Magic gotten Man. one? Magic Man, they oh, call well, me Magic Man. That makes sense, which we're gonna get a little bit of that magic oh, oh, later on today. we're gonna learn all about it. Final seconds here in this third quarter, 30 seconds to play. Howard looking for some help, trying to direct traffic. Yeah. Two on the shot clock. Barnes Jr. gives it up to Howard. Another good defensive effort by the Raft. Ten seconds to play in this third quarter. Good dribbling by Slade. Great on crossover. On the island. Four seconds to play. Johnson just throws it up. Here's Abdul Hawk. And he won't get a shot off to end the third quarter. But a four-point game here, John. That's Gotta one cut. shot. Anything can happen in the fourth. It Come was on. a two-point lead gone. at the half. The Raph has extended it. They're up four Player after three. Rim attacks, Five more minutes to play in regulation. The fourth quarter here in Vegas is coming up next. Welcome back to Las Vegas. The Wrath with a four-point lead over the buzzsaw. Start of the fourth quarter here. John Dornbaugh, Stormy Bonantoni, John Trippin, and Malik abdul Hawk says, learn my name. Starts this fourth with the slam. Buzzsaw coming the other way. Jamal Barnes Jr. That's going to be a two-pointer. So the buzzsaw take a one-point lead. Parks enters the slam zone, Tyquan, but denied. Oh, Taekwon squat two for two on that on the uh, on the stops. Abdul Hawk missed the alley oop. Wow! Look at Slade flying in there on the loose ball. Wrath have numbers. Cutter. And they'll reset. Remember, the Wrath are without three players tonight. And Darius Slade is stepping up the dunk for three more points. Abdul Hawk high off the window. That's a two. Slade knows he has to pick up the scoring tonight without Ty McGee. He's out with a concussion. He's our leading scorer here in this league. He had 43 points in one game. He set the all-time slam ball single game scoring record. In concussion protocol right now, the league is doing this out of an abundance of caution, but he said that he's really excited once he can get back out there on the court. But right now, a close game. I just talked to him a moment ago. He said, there is nothing more that I wish than to be out there on the court with my guys, but he's trying to do the best he can talking through things and watching the film. I mean, for a guy that puts up 91 points in three games, sit in the bench, regardless of whether you're injured or whether you're sitting, that's not where he wants to be. But safety first, slam ball's gonna protect their players. 
There's a four-point shot off the mark. Under three minutes to play here in regulation. Remember, they are playing for a spot in the main event tonight. The winner of this game will play against the winner of our game coming up next, the Slashers and the Rumble. Parks, and he's hit from Little behind. That is a foul against Jamal Barnes Jr. Face off, guys. You know what that means? It is off. time Stop. for a face-off. We don't shoot free throws in slam ball. You get fouled, you go against the guy who fouled you. Nick Parks going up against Jamal Barnes Jr. Stormer, who you got? I got Parks this time around. John, who you got? I, I'm going Jamal Barnes. He's stepping up. His game has drastically improved in the last uh, two quarters here. He's a man on a mission. Here comes Parks on the faceoff. Got him. And it's Jamal Barnes Jr. Nice call, John. Win, so, win some, lose some. I'll hey, you know what? You look in his eyes right now. This Barnes is determined right now. He knows he's got to pick it up, and he wants the weight on his shoulders. Here's another look at it. The Rath keep the possession after the faceoff. They reset, leaving the Tramps. Get your helmet after this play, okay? Here comes Landers, adjusts, and Dude, somehow finds a way to get it to go play. for two points. Draft down by one. That was a great play because Taekwon squad at the stopper position. Uh, excuse me, Scott. Look, he's got seven loose ball recoveries. He's got ten stops, one steal. He's having a great game. Taylor from the island will reset out top. Three on the shot clock. Howard with a deep four. Oh! It's raining in Vegas. Terrell Howard from deep. And the buzzsaw come away with the steal. Abdul Hawk from Seattle. And you talk about that four point shot. I mean, you're three feet further than an NBA three-pointer. It is a bomb. Here we go. Another face-off. It'll be Sean Stiff playing D. Going against Malik abdul Hawk at 6'7". John, I start with you. Who you got? I don't even need to say you know who I got. Stormy? abdul Hawk actually in this spot because he is one of the best at face-offs in the league right now. Oh, yeah, but here's what close, I have to say about close. that. You look at them trying to go in, and, and, and they're kind of like, they're trying to fake out Steve, which means, look, they're not on their A game. They're not just going to the hoop. They're intimidated by his size. I think, I think Stiff's in their head. Listen, Abdul Haq isn't small either, okay? He's not small, but he's, he's definitely not as stout as Stiff. Fair. There, Stiff again, getting his hand on that to bat it away. Shot clock continues to run. It's at 10. Howard enters from the wing off the window. And that was two buzzsaw players in the same tramp turnover. You know, you were just talking about Malik. Look, both Malik and Stith are 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, but Stith's got 55 pounds. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. 75 pounds on him. I'm also mad at myself that the first time I go against Stith is when he loses, so. That's right, no money when on the line. When my pick loses, excuse me, yes. Howard enters from the top. Now in the slam zone, puts it down. That was a great ball fake right there. The buzzsaw trying to pull away under a minute to play here in this fourth quarter. Landers, and the four-pointer rolls off the rim. The Raft, they need to make something happen here, down by eight. They will get the ball back with the shot clock winding down, but they need more possessions. Howard. One on the shot clock, and he just did get it off. So now the Raft with 20 seconds to play, down by eight. Let's see what they can do. Parks, he needs this. And that just might about do it. Yep, that oh, is another all one she wrote. for Taekwon Scott, and the buzzsaw will come from behind, and they'll win the opener tonight. 42, 34, as the buzzsaw moves to four and one. The Raft fall to three and two. We live another day. We live another day. That's what I'm talking about. Good, 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 good. Great job, great job. Is that my whole team? <laughs>
Great job, man. Good shit, man. Good shit, man. I mean, you got to credit the Wrath. What a valiant effort, John. Three players out tonight. They get guys subbing in off the fly. They only had a few days to practice. The Wrath, they were close, but the buzz on the fourth quarter just was able to pull away. You know, uh, going back to the Wrath, you look at Nick Parks, right? A guy that needs to Talk step to up and, and fill the shoes of oh Ty McGee, God. which are big shoes to fill. Uh, uh, hats off, guys stepped up and tried to do the best they could, just came up short. All right, Stormy standing by with a stopper for the buzzsaw, Tyquan Scott. Tyquan, the first time that you guys played the Wrath, you had 10 stops. Double digit stops again tonight in a low scoring affair. What got into you? I mean, I just know that, you know, I want to come out here and do what I got to do because my teammates is going hard, so I got to go hard too, you know what I'm saying? How do you take this win and gain a little bit of momentum and bring that toward the main event later on tonight? Honestly, we're just taking it game by game. You know, I don't look past games. I'm just waiting to, you know, go step by step. We don't look forward. We just could go to the next, you know, next game. So take game at a time. Well, enjoy this one. Good luck tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you. What a performance from Taekwon Scott. 11 stops. Stormy said it again. Double digit stops, a huge performance as the Buzzsaw get the win in our first game of the night. There's Scott, number 24. Defense Nothing wins championships. Coming close.